Hi everyone, welcome to part 2 of building a backbone web application. This time we'll be covering uh, views and templates. So we're going to start out looking at our index.html file. Uh, I made some edits to it behind the scenes. First of all, I just added all the script tags we need just because I don't want to bother going back in there to put them in later. Also down here is three different templates. This is the header template, the wine detail template, and the wine list item type template. Uh, right now we're just going to be using them inline and in the next episode we will be converting them over to external templates to make things a little cleaner. Alright, so first we'll start uh, creating a new file. We're going to uh, save it as JavaScript. We'll make this main.js um, so what we're doing in here uh, related to the views is creating a prototype uh, function so we're going to be and we're going to be adding a function called close so what this function is going to be is the function that you call anytime you want to finish up a view. Just close it down and make sure everything's cleaned up from it because a lot of times uh, views will just be sitting around in memory and waiting to be garbage collected but this will uh, keep it from leaking too much memory. Alright so we're just gonna make a log which isn't necessary but can anyway. So what this normally would do is just, just start remove. So that removes the element from the DOM and this dot unbind. Make sure none of the um, the event handlers are still floating around in the DOM either. Now what we're going to do, which we don't actually use in this application, but would be good for anybody's application, is create a before close hook. So we're checking to see oops, no parentheses here. Um, we're checking to see if this step before close exists. So in other words, you can create your own this dot before close function and if you do it'll run it here. If you don't create it it won't do anything here. It'll skip this part. But it allows you to do extra cleanup stuff that you want to do specific for that one view. Uh there I'm not exactly sure what you might need, but you never know. So that's it. That's in the main.js. We don't need that anymore. We'll just know that we have a close function. So what we're going to create. The view that we're going to create first is the header. Um, we'll go ahead and save this right away. Views. The header.js inside the views folder. Okay. So of course we start out with extending the backbone view alright so most of the time this is what we're going to do first is initialize which will be all we're going to be doing in here is setting the template Now I'm going to be using the underscore templating library because one, it's already there, and two, there's it easily serves our purposes. So what we need to do is get the it's called header template and just get the HTML for it. And that will set the template. 
now you come down here and go create the render function. Um, in here, we are going to do that. And set the HTML to this dot template. Uh, we don't have to do anything special with this template, but like sending in any data because this template, as you can see down here, has no data to do. There's no tags like this. It's just a simple wine, uh, new wine button. And then what I like to do is just return this dot element because, well, it kind of makes sense. Like the rendering. Has, uh, it has to do with creating and rendering the element and then so the element is related to it and a lot of times you'll in a different file you tell the view to do a render and then you, you'll use the element from the view and plug it into the DOM so this makes it uh, one step easier <coughs> um, so now we'll do events Oops. For the events hash, all we have is the click handler for the new button, which will run the new line function. So we'll create that right away. And all this bad boy does is tell the application or the router that we want to navigate to wines slash new and you will see that coming up in a future episode uh, how or what's the um, different routes are but um, that makes sense so it's just wine slash new so we're looking for a new wine and that will open up this right here this is the empty form alright so we'll save that that's all we needed and we'll move on to the next header over here uh, we'll start with we're going to save this one right away as wine list. Yes. This one will control the list over here. Uh, the wine list view basically is the wrapper view for the entire list. And we're going to be creating a second view inside the same file that contains each individual item on the list. So this is the wine list view. Nothing new here. Extend the backbone view. Uh, first, we're going to set the tag name just to. Uh, ordered list because it is a list of lines. Then we're going to set the initialize function. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to set a self variable because we'll need that pretty soon. Um, then we're going to set some, some bindings to the model. And the model in this case is actually going to be uh, a collection, not really a model. Which, you know, it's just a bunch of models. So, uh, when it's reset, then we're going to run render. And we're going to set this as the context for that function. Then the other binding we need, we're actually going to... Whoop, sorry about that throw in a an anonymous function so 
So this is what we need the self for. Well, right here we'll add in. I'll finish this off. Um, so we need self dot el. Uh, so inside of our ul document or element, we're going to append a new view. So we're going to create a new win wine list item view. And we're going to send it in the model, which is wine, which is set right here. And then we're going to render it right away. We just send in the which would bring in the dot element of wireless item view because remember the render functions return this dot l. So that element is going to be sent into the append function. And we'll close that off. And that is all that's needed for the initialize function. Now we need a render function. So we're going to use a real quick uh, any and easy uh, iterator um, the underscore library. And we're going to go over this dot model dot models. So all the models inside the collection, we're going to iterate over those. And for each one of those, we use this as the context. Okay, this dot L. We're going to be doing this back, essentially the same thing as adding a model and just append a or just copy and paste this a new wine list item view and then we'll return this dot l well, thinking about this now uh, these two things are exactly the same so it might have been best to try to separate it off into its own function and just send it. I'm pretty sure you can send it just like this using a context variable for this right here but I'm just copy and pasting what he made right now so go ahead and experiment with that yourself and we'll just move on right now Anyway, so we're creating the next view back, uh, wine list item view. As usual, extending the backbone view. Uh, this one, tag name is going to be uh, li, which or list item, which once again makes sense. Oh. Uh, once again, creating the initialize function. Here we're going to set the template. Using underscore again. Uh, this one is called uh, wine list template, I believe. We'll take a look. Uh, right here, wine list item template. Okay, it is. So we'll use that. And let's select that and we'll send in the HTML of that. Then we'll move on to some model bindings. So when the model is changed we do the render function
and when. Ooh, come on. The model is destroyed or deleted. Then we're going to close the view, which is that new function that we create with that prototype of earlier, first thing that you did. So now we need the render function. And this time out. Oh, you know, I I feel like I remember instead of doing that, we can just do this dot L like that, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, look it up. I'll maybe mention it in the post if I remember. Uh, this dot template. This time we're sending in. Whoop, Um, some actual data to the template. Uh, we're just grabbing the JSON data from the model. And returning this stuff out. So that's all we have for the wine lists. So let's move on to the next one. We're going to do the big bad view right now. This one's pretty big. This is going to be wine details. Yes. Now this one is going to be the bit that creates this form. So that's part of the reason why it's so that, uh, annoying is because there's so many elements and this one does all the saving and deleting. So switch back into here. So we're going to create wine view. Alright. We won't create a tag name because we're just going to use div, which is the default, so we'll just go straight to the initialize function. And here we'll create the template as usual. Uh, using underscore. And this one should be is it wine details? Wine details template. I'll copy and paste that. HTML. And we'll set up our model binding so that when there is a change to the model, we can render that change immediately. And for render, this is actually pretty simple, considering how much there is to it. But that's the great thing about templating. All we need to do is set the HTML to the template. No apostrophe. No single quotes, I guess. Set that and return step out. So that was really simple. So now we'll move on to events. Uh, he has an event in here for changing on input. So anytime you change the value of a field, it will just all it does is a little console.log. 
So, but we're going to skip that one. Um, and we're going to do whenever click the save button. We're going to run our save line function. And whenever we click the delete button, we will run the delete line button function. Sorry. So I'm gonna scroll over my notes real quick. Okay. So save line. We'll start with that. So for saving line we need to set all the data in the model, which there is a lot of data. So there's a lot of pieces here. So we need to set the name, the grapes, the country, region, year, and the description. So all of these we just pull the data from the form fields elements and that's not that is this okay we'll just copy and paste this and and change the IDs Alright, so that just sets the data on the model. Moving on, this dot model dot is new. So we're going to do, do two different things depending on whether or not the model already existed. Set that up right away. Uh, if the model ex did not exist, well, where it's new. We are going to do app dot line list. Uh, you'll see what that is later. Uh, they're just uh, wine list is actually the collection of all the wines, and it is stored inside the router or app here. So within this. We're going to create a new model. Um, but we're actually going, not actually going to create a new one. We're, to, we're going to add the one that we already have. And here we're just going to add a success handler. So because when you create um, the collection, it's going to try to save it on the back end. So if we succeed, we're going to navigate to lines. Um, I'm going to give it the ID of the model. So, it will end up with like uh, hash lines slash the ID was like 24 or whatever at the end of the uh, URL. Otherwise, if we already created the model, then we're already at that 
that uh, URL, that app view. So we're just going to save it and we'll be done. I'm going to return false here to prevent any bubbling or anything because this is from an event handler. Do the same thing at the end of the delete line too. So now we're going to create delete line. Alright, just uh, model that destroy. So once again we're going to do a success handler. And I know this is horrible, but we're going to alert. Just let people know that the line was deleted successfully. And then we'll do window dot his back. So what we're doing is just going back in history one to whatever view we were looking at before we deleted this line. And then we'll return false or place or whatever. And that's all there is to it. Um, so next time, like I said earlier, we'll be going over templates and converting them to external files, and we'll keep this project moving forward and starting on probably the router next turn and next time, and maybe even get it running. So that's all. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you next time. In the meantime, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.